Let's talk about how to pass the first round Audi interview. What's up guys, it's Mike from Job in English. If you don't already know me, I've been helping graduates and professionals get into some of the best jobs in the world since 2013 as a career coach. Today, we're gonna to be breaking down the interview process for Audi, one of our most watched videos of all time. And also, I am well aware that previously when we did this video, we aimed it strictly at their higher level graduate positions. But a lot of the people who have watched this video are applying to be a store assistant, to work in terms of stock taking and stocking up or a cashier. So I wanted to make a slightly different video for you today, which I hope is gonna help people who are applying for management positions and also for people who are applying for entry level positions, because I want our videos to be as helpful as possible. So first of all, we're gonna start off with five fast facts about Audi that you can use in the question, why do you want to work for Audi? We're gonna talk about the interview process and then I'm gonna go through some common questions that came across both for store assistant roles and also for higher level graduate or management roles. Let's get started. It seems impossible to think of now, but Audi only arrived in 1990. Since then, they have grown exponentially in the UK and now have over a thousand stores and 45,000 staff. 400 of those stores are powered solely via solar panels. And Audi has made a commitment to cut the number of plastic and packaging that it uses by 50%. And also in 2022, managed to reach a significant milestone, which is making sure that all of its own brand products were made of 100% recyclable packaging. Audi also has a number of social and charitable giving aspects to its business, two of which we wanted to highlight. The first in 2017 was its partnership with the Teenage Cancer Trust, which up until this point has helped to raise eight million pounds and they are setting a target to raise 15 million pounds by 2027. Audi also partnered with the charity Neighborly to provide over 10 million free meals and many of Audi's stores will have any of their out of date goods will be transferred and delivered to depots so that they can then be given away to families and people in need. So let's talk about Audi's interview process. To be honest, I've seen this change quite a lot. Even for a store assistant position, many people almost complained about the complexity of the application process. We had to do an online test, a video interview, a face-to-face -face interview, and maybe even a final interview with your store manager or even the area manager. So this does vary. I find that a lot of people had to do video interviews, which was three questions, 60 seconds answer and 60 seconds to respond, which seemed really quick. And almost everybody went and did an interview in store. Sometimes this was in the sense of a group interview, but really what this meant was you had loads of people come into the store and then get interviewed one by one. And sometimes people get interviewed by phone. Generally, the theme for the Audi interview was knowing about Audi and also knowing about the competition that are really important for the role. If you are a young person that's watching this or maybe you're somebody who's going back into the workforce, something that I really highly recommend that you do is make sure that you have a good understanding of the job description. The job description for a role basically sets out exactly what the company is looking for. Most people will go to an interview and they won't really have a good and decent grasp of the job description. Why is this important? Because the company is basically gonna base all of the questions around the job description. So if you're gonna be working with people, they're gonna probably ask you a question about customer service. If you're gonna be working in store, they're gonna ask you about teamwork. You can learn to anticipate and even predict the questions that you're going to be asked by having a solid understanding of the job description. Now, if the job description for you and for your role is not particularly clear, it's quite salesy, it's a bit vague, just go and type into Google the name of your job and find a job description that is clear and outlines exactly what your duties and responsibilities are going to be and what would be the best skills for you to have in order for you to do this role effectively. So now I want to go through some common questions that you can expect from Audi. Some of these were asked for an area manager role, some of these were asked for a store assistant role, but to be honest I did see a lot of crossover.
over. First of all, I want to go through the questions that were asked recently for a store assistant so you can think about how you would answer these questions. Question number one, what are your hobbies? Now, a lot of people struggle to answer this question because they think what is relevant. It doesn't particularly matter what your hobbies are, so I do recommend that you try and include something that demonstrates that you actually like to work with other people. So it could be a sport that you do, it could even be something, a game that you play online. Just really, we're looking to understand is are you just somebody who does everything by themselves are you somebody that does something with other people? Question number two, what is your work experience and why did you leave your last role? So when you're going through your work experience, in my personal opinion, the majority of your time should really be spent on your last role. When you're explaining your work experience, try to match it up to the job description for what you're doing. So if you're going to be a cashier, a store assistant, or gonna be stocking shelves, then you want to pull out things that are similar to what you're going to be doing. Maybe it's attention to detail, dealing with customers, working as part of a team, being able to resolve conflicts, working in a fast paced environment. It doesn't matter what your previous work experience is or how long ago it was. Really what an interviewer is looking for is to think if I am advertising for a chef at a burger restaurant, all I want to hear is can you make burgers? Can you get here on time? And can you make a lot of burgers quickly because we get really busy? The rest is a bonus and it's a nice to have the fact that you have a business level of French or you really enjoy coding and Python, it doesn't particularly matter to me because it's not relevant for the job description. When you're talking about why you left your last role, if you left on bad terms, don't worry about it. There are two things to really stress about this. Number one, never speak badly of your previous employer. It is a really bad look. It's much like being a gossip. Whenever I talk to somebody who's very gossipy, I tend to not really say very much because I think, well, you're probably just gonna gossip about me as well. It's the same when it comes to bad mouthing an employer. Every so often somebody will say to me, but it's true or you'll never believe, just don't do it. Just say, look, unfortunately, uh, I came to my end of my, t I came to the end of my time with that employer and we just didn't see eye to eye and I ended up leaving or I was let go. Another way to look at it as well is just to say, look, you know, there was a change in life circumstances. I'd done everything that I could do at that role and I was just looking for a new opportunity. Question number three, something that is becoming increasingly more likely are scenario based questions and I want to walk you through this and I'm just going to make up a scenario based question on the spot you're working as a cashier it is rush hour at the store and somebody becomes incredibly upset because they're absolutely adamant that you have charged them the wrong price for a piece of their shopping what do you do so when talking about answering scenario based questions first of all what you want to think about is who is involved well there's yourself there's the upset customer and obviously the the other members of your team the second thing to think about is what is within your sphere of control or what is actually part of your job description. What is within your sphere of control is that you are the cashier. You are the person who controls whether that person leaves the store or doesn't leave the store in terms of legally paying for those items. But also you don't know the price of all the items or the goods in the store. You want to be proactive while also demonstrating good customer service. So you may listen to the customer, understand that they're upset and say, that's absolutely fine. Just give me a second. I'm just gonna call my manager to come over. You call your manager to come over. You get them to go and check the price or to confirm what's happening and then you say look just give us a moment we're just going to go and check that price for you something else to bear in mind is that unfortunately some people are not so great at what we call emotional regulation so their behaviors their attitudes and their actions and the way that they come across to you being a cashier and Aldi probably has absolutely nothing to do with you Either they're just a bit of a douchebag or they're just having a bad day and later on they're going to regret what it is that they did. The manager comes back, either confirms that the price is correct or actually that there is a mistake and it needs to be rung through in a different way, but at least this way you get kind of double validation. If the customer continues to be upset, then this then becomes something which is escalated beyond you. You can pass on to your manager and most of the time people just say, oh, okay, I've made a mistake or oh, whatever, and then go and pay for their items. Something really important about answering scenario based question is just pause and take your time. The scenarios will generally be taken from the workplace. They're probably something that you've come across before and you want to think about how would I teach somebody else 
how to do this thing? How would I teach my son or my daughter to deal with this situation? How would I teach my friend, my boyfriend or girlfriend? I find that when you change your point of view in terms of teaching rather than telling, it helps you to slow things down and lay out the process step by step. Question number four, why should we pick you out of everyone else? This is a real kind of question to put you on the spot. And what's really important is knowing and understanding the job description. It's not about you competing with other people. It's you being the best fit for the job and also knowing the most about the job. So you might turn around, say you're applying for a customer service position at Audi and you might turn around and say, I think I am the best person for the job because I've worked with customers for seven years. I've worked in a high paced environment. I previously worked in retail, though not at this scale. I think I'm quite mature for my age I'm a steady hand I'm able to do jobs as and when they come up I'm very good at multitasking which I think is really important working in customer service and being a cashier at Aldi I'm going to be changing roles based upon shift patterns and who's there in the store I'm also really easy to get on with I'm highly punctual I realize in a large store like the one that you have here it's so important for somebody to be consistent and to be reliable and I think that's something I've demonstrated all the way through my seven years of work experience. And finally, question number five, which most people got asked is what's your availability? So this is just if you have any kind of notice period. And I would say when talking about your availability, you start from the week after, right? So say you're getting interviewed on Tuesday, say, well, I'd be available to start from next Monday. Don't try to all of a sudden talk about a doctor's appointment that you have or this or that or the other. It's not something people want to discuss straight away. You don't want to inject any elements of friction within the conversation. Be like, well, I guess I could do this day, but I'm not really sure about this. You would be amazed how many people I've come across when I've interviewed them for administrative roles within my own business people be like well I can't do this and I can't do that and all I'm thinking of let's is aggravation why don't you just say you can't start for a week but I don't I'm having a difficult enough time trying to manage my own businesses and my own staff without having to manage your schedule so just keep it as clear and as simple as possible so here are four other questions that came up which were probably more related to the area manager role or senior manager why do you want to work for Aldi so when you're going through answering this question make sure you've done research just like I've done it you can go and look at Aldi's corporate page. It's actually really helpful, really easy to read. There's lots of great facts in there. And you could possibly pick out one or two things which resonate with you. Why do you want to do this role? Whenever you're speaking about any role, when you're asked why do you want to do it, the wrong way to answer this question is just to incessantly talk about yourself and why you're the best person for the job. What you want to do is, first of all, explain what it is that you're going to be doing. Well, actually, as an area manager, I would have to oversee four stores. There would be a reasonable amount of travel involved. I would have to spend uh, one day every fortnight in each store, as well as um, a significant amount of time, whether that be in head office or traveling around in the car, different vendors and suppliers. And I would also be expected to feel difficult problems from each of my managers. What this demonstrates to the interviewer is that you have a really good understanding of the job that you're going to be doing. You can't say that you're good at doing something if you haven't clearly demonstrated what it is. Then afterwards, you can include two or three things which make you a really good fit for the job and make sure you just provide a sentence giving some form of proof just to demonstrate why you're good. I think that I'm great with people as I actually spent 12 years working in a charity shop, dealing with people day in, day out. On an average week, I'd probably meet 200 to 250 customers of all ages, and I always got on with everybody. Tell me about a time when you delivered great customer service. Now, you should expect to come across competency questions for Aldi. One thing that I would say is what's a really good thing to do is to figure out your star stories. So just three or four examples from work, ideally, that just put you in the best light possible. And then you can learn to manipulate those answers to fit for each of the competency questions that are involved. If you want to click clearer reference for that, then why don't you go and check out our 28 most common interview questions answered ebook. It's super cheap and it gives you everything that you need to develop some really great scripts. But talking about great customer service for me is really about going above and beyond what is expected of you in order to make a good impact on the interviewer. And finally, describe a time when you worked as part of a team. So when you're answering competency questions you want to be used what's known as the star format which is situation task action result the majority of your answers should be based on the action 
ideally about 70%. The situation is like where and when, the task is what were you doing, and the action is where can you demonstrate this skill. Demonstrating something like teamwork is just about communication, being helpful, being prompt or on time, um, being willing to listen to others and also to work together to reach a common goal. Guys, I hope that you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please press the like button. It takes us a lot of time to research these videos and everything that's involved in helping you to pass your interview. Let us know if you've got an interview coming up, what other companies you'd like us to cover, or how your interview went. Bye.